Dr. Leonid Dolgov from University of Tartu, Estonia, plates of reduced graphene uh, oxide and silver nanoparticles. The surface enhanced vibration spectroscopy of DNA on his tunes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can. And yes. Uh, uh, what about presentation? Do you see? Is it started? Uh, yes, we can see you and uh, hear you. You clear and uh, coherently. Okay. And uh, is presentation in the full screen mode? Yes. No. Not. Just a moment. I can switch it on. Just a moment. For some reason. Oh, now it should be. No, it's okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you uh, for the introduction. Uh, I uh, I am Lenny Dalgov. I work uh, at the Institute of Physics, uh, University of Tartu, Estonia. And uh, my report today will be about uh, surface-enhanced spectroscopy. Basically, here I mentioned in the title vibrational spectroscopy, but uh, I specify it more like a Raman one. Uh, there are no doubts that Raman is actual. Uh, and uh, just I would like to make some examples of its actuality. Uh, here you can see uh, the system which is aimed Raman detection of explosive, uh, explosives in the public places. So the principle of work is when this guy comes near the photocell, let's uh, imagine that it is potential uh, dangerous guy who has some traces of explosives on the, on the um, clothes, then uh, this photocell switches on the laser, laser come to the clothes scattered, and uh, finally, scattered light come to the Raman spectrometer. And if indeed this guy prepared some bomb and home and inaccurately that these traces of explosives are left on his clothes, then we will see on the uh, spectrometer some characteristics bands of this explosive material. Another, let's say more peaceful uh, application, it's, uh, you know, this Perseverance rover, which uh, was started recently to Mars, and it has on board also a Raman spectrometer in as a part of Sherlock, uh, Sherlock head, and it is aimed basically exploration of planets, minerals, and searching for possible, uh, possible uh, traces of li life there. So they have some hopes about this. And maybe the most actual, uh, now you see that Raman is so uh, powerful technique that it allows some detection of viruses. And uh, these pictures are uh, taken from the site of Professor Mauricio Terrones in Pennsylvania University, uh, who deals uh, and his group deals with uh, detection of viruses by Raman. So, it's quite promising. And um, I tell a little bit about mechanisms, how Raman works. Uh, usually when people say about Raman, they mean uh, so-called uh, inelastic light scattering. It means that when the, uh, when the photon comes to material, it gives some energy to uh, molecular vibrations of material or some phonon vibrations of crystal lattice, or it can obtain some energy from these phonon, phonon vi vibrations. And then uh, we can see uh, in case of decrease of phonon, uh, photon energy Stokes bands in Raman scattering, or when the energy is increased, which is less probable, we have uh, anti Stokes bands. And in between them, you see this band is uh, for usual uh, relay scattering, which happens without changing, uh, changing frequency of light or energy of light. 
And in principle, it's possible to collect uh, Raman scattering from the sample uh, by microscope objective, and then using some holographic notch filter, separate it from the relay scattering. But here you see that uh, relay scattering is usually very, um, very much more intensive than, than Raman one. And there are some efforts uh, directed on increased intensity of Raman scattering. And uh, this direction is named so-called surface enhanced Raman scattering. And in our work, we used uh, surfaces of silver nanoparticles and uh, surface of uh, reduced graphene oxide flakes for enhancing uh, signal. And as uh, tested molecules, we used uh, organic uh, adenine and timine molecules, which are biologically important molecules because they are constituents of DNA. So um, saying about graphene uh, enhanced Raman, it's a comparatively new direction and uh, it can be explained by such a way that when we have, for example, adenine molecule uh, on the surface of graphene, uh, it, uh, it comes by such a way that it uh, goes to the, on the top of the carbon ring, uh, which we have in graphene, uh, graphene surface, and this so-called P-staking uh, brings uh, the sample and the surface so closely that uh, under the action of incident light, it is possible to have um, electron transfer. When, when the electron come from the Fermi level of graphene to the low unoccupied molecular orbital of adenine, and this electron transferred electron will give increase in polarizability and it as consequence uh, will give increase in uh, cross section of Raman process and finally give increase in intensity. But uh, let's say more essential effect can be in case of silver particles because you see that intensity of Raman scattering is proportional to the uh, second power of electric strands in the light wave. And this electric strands uh, usually is become stronger near the silver particle in the, uh, near the surface. And this effect uh, happens usually when the uh, permittivity of silver is negative here in this region, and it is twice higher than permittivity of environment. It can be in air or in water solution. So it, it's negative twice higher than uh, permittivity of uh, medium. And finally, it gives quite strong local field, which cause increase in intensity also. And usually this uh, resonance points comes to the, for silver, to the, uh, let's say, violet or near ultraviolet light. But in principle, when we have, uh, here, here, I just demonstrated that silver colloid usually have brownish, uh, yellowish brownish color in transmittance because bluish and near blue uh, light wavelengths are just absorbed or scattered. And this is shown here by these resonance peaks. But it's possible also to have more broader resonances which are shifted to the red one, uh, to the red uh, area when we have a clusters like here on the photo, if you have a clusters of particles, it's possible to have more broader resonances which are shifted to red light. It means that uh, in principle, uh, we can get some enhanced uh, scattering both uh, for bluish excitation and for reddish, more reddish excitation. Uh, here I uh, would like to point that this work was done in the frame of a uh, Marie Curie project, and here is our team. You see the uh, scientists from Ukraine, Estonia, and this guy, Simhen Salu, also connected to Japan, because he, uh, when we preparated a uh, paper about our results, he uh, moved to Japan, obtained some uh, position of uh, 
PhD student there. So he now in Waseda University in, in Japan. Uh, so uh, we use such uh, kind of uh, unique setup because it's quite uh, interesting method of synthesis. We uh, synthesize silver particles from uh, silver nitride dissolved in water and inside this a liquid was also floating uh, graphene oxide flakes and uh, both these components were recovered uh, together under the action of uh, electrical discharge plasma. You see here between the uh, metal electrode and the liquid surface. And as a result, we obtained silver nanoparticles with size near seven, 17 uh, nanometers and uh, uh, reduced graphene oxide flakes with concentration near two milligram per milliliter. And in the same, uh, in the same liquid, we dissolved uh, commercial uh, adenine or timine powders, which we had. So finally, we have a liquid in which we have everything. We have uh, both our analyte molecules and uh, also enhancing nanocomponents. And our first idea was just uh, use some drop casting uh, of this uh, liquid on the microscope glasses and after drying, try to measure. But you see that it is not so easy because when we make a droplets, there is so-called scoffering effect. When the droplets start to dry, all material comes to travel to the border of the droplet because molecule from the border evaporated and it causes some movement of liquid together with dissolved material or dispersed material to the edge of the droplet. Uh, if material has uh, some uh, dissolved component which can be crystallized, uh, we can obtain some intermediate position when not all material in the border, but some of them in the center. But finally, this effect is not good for us because it uh, separates our components. But finally, we found the way uh, that if solution is very diluted and if droplets are very small, like one microliter droplet, uh, it's possible obtain uh, more homogeneous uh, distribution of material. And here is demonstrated that indeed uh, the less concentration uh, we have of uh, adenine or timine in our droplets, the uh, smaller material is smaller amount, amount of material on the border. Finally, we made a uh, big set of concentrations. You see that uh, from 7.4 millimoles up to uh, 7,000 parts of millimoles. But we uh, pay special attention to concentration in this region, which are, uh, which are marked by red color, because uh, for them, we obtain quite uh, more homogeneous uh, distribution of components uh, after drying. And when we turn to the spectra, you see that on the top we have timine, uh, timine-based samples, on the bottom we have adenine-based samples, and uh, at the very bottom we have uh, silver with reduced graphene oxide, and you can see that uh, for graphene oxide we have typical carbon bands like graphene G band and defect D band also. And the same bands we have on these bluish and greenish graphs, you see them as background. But uh, still we see that on this, even on this carbon background, we have some peaks which are demonstrate that some bands from timine and adenine are still enhanced. Uh, and uh, the question now is how to estimate this enhancement. And usually people say that when we say about uh, surface enhanced Raman scattering, then usual enhancement like several orders, people say. But if we examine our graphs, you see that, okay, we compare intensities for these uh, yellow and blue, uh, the most intensive peaks, but we obtain 
only like one order. Why, why it is so? Why it is so small? But here there is a kind, uh, kind of trick uh, about which uh, not always people uh, say that uh, every time it is needed some post-processing for this spectra, spectra. In this case, it is needed to multiply this coefficient on the ratio of molecules. Uh, it's a ratio of molecules for which we have usual Raman to the molecules for which we have SERS signal. And if we assume that amount of uh, hot spots near our nanoparticles are much more smaller than amount of molecules in, in usual probe uh, without surface enhancement, then indeed we can obtain such several orders in, uh, in uh, enhancement. So uh, finally, in this work, we prepared a composite liquid dispersion, which contains both analyt molecules such as adenine and timine and nano-sized enhancing particles of silver and reduced graphene oxide flakes. And we showed that comparatively simple drop casting deposition of tested solutions with their further dry and at room conditions can provide confident surface enhancement uh, in Raman scattering. And uh, we would like to acknowledge um, FP7 project, metal nanoparticles interactions with bioorganic molecules for financial support and you for uh, your attention. Okay, thank you very much Leonid, for the interesting talk. Uh, this time uh, we have not question in the ch uh, YouTube chat uh, because uh, Leonid is speaker and can <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, what about uh, Hall in Lviv, Lena? Hello, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first question uh, why do you uh, use uh, the round uh, R silver nanoparticles? Because it's well known that uh, the Raman and hence scattering uh, is very different on the shape. Uh, yes, it is. It is good question. It is good question. Uh, uh, you see that usually Raman, uh, when people say about Raman, they try to adapt adapt it so that when you excite, when your laser excitation you have, you comes by this excitation you comes in resonance with resonance of your particle. And uh, we just uh, had a hope that these agglomerates, which we see, just soft, soft aggregates, which we see on the surface, and I demonstrated that it gives some red shift of the resonance position. We, we had a hope that uh, with that red laser, which we have, we can come to the resonance. And you see that we kind of obtained some, some surface enhanced uh, effect. But uh, you are right that if, uh, uh, if just to, to continue, for example, to develop this, it would be nice to see uh, how, how big will be effect if you change the shape of particles, for example, ma make them more elongated and by such a way shift the resonance in the red. Yes, it, it is reasonable. Thank you. And uh, the other question is, uh, uh, try to, uh, did you try to make uh, the surface from the silver nanoparticles and then deposit your materials? Uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of, yes, it's a kind of good question, but you see that uh, when we prepare this, uh, since we prepare this composite and this uh, silver was reduced together with uh, graphene uh, in, one, in one bottle, so um, uh, we did not compare basically uh, how it depends on the order of deposition because uh, you see then you will have two kind of like two bottles in one you will deposit firstly then from second you will have droplets and uh, we did not compare it but it's it, nice idea that we can do we, we can try and compare results okay uh, Okay, thank you. And we have one question from chat. 
could you say some word about spectral efficiency of reported materials? Uh, I don't don't uh, exactly catch what they mean, uh, like spectral efficiency. Uh, you mean kind of uh, if if you say about quantum yield, then uh, it's usually it's usually uh, we we have some fluorescence from from organics, uh, but we try to avoid it because in our case it's parasitic effect because it uh, it masks our Raman signal, and the less fluorescence they have we have the, uh, the more uh, for us beneficial. But uh, in, in case of uh, kind of like Raman enhancement, as I said, we obtain before, before post-processing of spectra, we can obtain like one order or one and a half order enhancement. Uh, maybe in some, if we are lucky to come to the hotspots, we can obtain like more, like three orders, uh, not, not three orders, but like 30, 30 times, 40 times uh, in the spectra, which are not, not normalized for the concentration of molecules. Okay. Uh, so, but uh, uh, in chat, I see some questions from Rustan Sergeyenko. Question which you answer. Did you reduce oxide graphene to graphene why you did you use plasma during preparation ah the question that uh, uh, initially we have these flakes which are oxidized it means that we have graphene flakes but they they are not not initially graphene but more like graphene oxide and this plasma aimed uh, make made uh, chemical Chemically, it from oxide state to the really more close to graphene-like state. Of course, uh, when you when you see that in the Raman, you have very very broad this defect band. It means that uh, we are kind of like partially successful because um, if we say about like monolayer like CVD graphene, it's it's uh, without doubts with uh, it's better quality than graphene flakes. But graphene flakes are kind of like more functional and more cheap now. Therefore, we try to use them for, for Raman applications to see how they influence. Elena, you have switched okay. off microphone. <laughs> In, in in the in the zoom okay uh, yeah colleagues we have uh, some problem uh, with uh, uh, next uh, speaker that's why uh, we have uh, maybe one two minutes when we add uh, him uh, to our youtube channels so uh, now oh, uh, in the call we did uh, have some. another questions Yes, thank you, Leonid. And okay, I thank you for collaboration, Alan. Okay, uh, so uh, now we're waiting uh, for the next uh, speaker, but he cannot uh, connect uh, to our session. Uh, I think uh, it will can take uh, maybe two three minutes. Okay, maybe I can ask uh, Leonid some question. Yes, it will be uh, nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, you mentioned in your introduction about possibility of using uh, Raman for uh, some uh, practical things for detecting of explosive. And uh, as I understand, the main problem is uh, sensitivities. Uh, what yes, yes, you are right that um, usually, usually people try to make some demonstrations, but uh, uh, it's every time you need some post-processing. It means that if the signal is masked by fluorescence or if you have not very strong single, uh, signal and you need to filter it, you need 
to use some software. It means that this complex definitely should include some software for post-processing and, uh, and uh, people should see this result uh, after, after it. Because it's not so not so kind uh, uh, not so kind uh, like direct vision. Because th when we started this work, we also s s saw that okay, s Raman Raman works, Raman setup we have, so we can try some surface enhancement and see. But <laughs> in practice, it 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 has some technical technical questions which should be solved for for complete application of Raman. Okay, and what is uh, preferable, cars or? So uh, about the cars, uh, I think that we need to use two lasers, so it's more complex system. But in principle, cars can give stronger signal. But uh, it 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 uh, I think it it requires more sophisticated uh, adjustment because you need some. First laser resonance leak side and second uh, laser uh, like probe uh, get Raman. I, I I know about this uh, technique, but I did not have myself experience to work with cars. Okay. Okay, maybe in chat we have some questions. There is some question. Uh, Uh, from Ludmila Filevskaya. Good day, Leonid. You performed uh, infrared spectroscopy to compare with Raman results. Did you perform? It's a kind of like, uh, yes, we, we did it. We did it uh, and it's published in our paper uh, on which I refer in my on my slides. Uh, it it has also it has also some enhancement in infrared also it gives some enhancement uh, but here the same we we should be very careful when we estimate how big this enhancement because it should be compared some samples some reference samples then with uh, samples which have uh, only for example graphene just to understand what bands give graphene uh, for infrared, because my experience is I'm more experienced with Raman than with infrared. Therefore, I, I can comment uh, at the moment only uh, more Raman. And about infrared, I think that uh, maybe we can we can uh, consult with Olena Fesenka about this, because this work was done in collaboration with, with Olena. Okay. I remember that we we did we did it and uh, we had some enhancement in infrared, but I. Uh, we saw we saw that enhancement for infrared abs absorption also was. Okay, so I see that uh, next speaker is already in the internet, but. Still, there is some problem, as I understand, with his talk. Unfortunately, we have another question in the chat, but uh, this question, for some reason... Uh, <laughs> ...that message is not visible. Okay.